Welcome to Political Beatdown. I'm Ben Micellis, joined by Michael Cohen. We have another historic live broadcast. We previously covered the indictment when it was handed down by a grand jury with special counsel Jack Smith announcing it at a press conference in Washington, D.C., a four-count indictment for Donald Trump's criminal conduct relating to the 2020 election and the January 6th uh, insurrection. We will go over and cover what was in that indictment in more detail on this episode, of course. As we are broadcasting live right now, Donald Trump is expected to be arraigned at 4 Eastern. Uh, and right now, uh, an audience and a crowd is developing outside of the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. We will be covering the arrival of Donald Trump to the courthouse, and we will be covering everything that we find out that is taking place at this arraignment that is set to take place today in real time. What we've learned already is that Trump will undergo digital fingerprinting as part of the booking process at the courthouse today. No mugshot will be taken. The court will use an existing photo of Donald Trump in its place, according to a U.S. Marshal Service spokesperson, as reported by MSNBC. Michael Cohen on this historic edition of Political Beatdown as we await for Donald Trump to arrive. This uh, uh, yet another uh, criminal indictment, the third of hey, Donald ben, Trump. What are hey, your ben, thoughts I wonder that? whether... I wonder whether they're going to use one of the photos of Trump, one of those NFT photos of Donald, you know, uh, like at Mr. Olympia or as a superhero, which I think would be rather interesting considering, as far as I'm concerned, he should be treated the same as everybody else. And that's not what we're seeing right now. So this piece of shit lands over at Reagan National Airport. You have... 10 police cars or so that are there waiting for him. They shut down the route in order to get him to the courthouse. All right. Uh, I promise you, I promise you one thing, Ben, that if it was you, if it was me, if it was any of our brigaders, if it was any other American, you wouldn't be treated like a rock star. And I have a fundamental problem with this. Trump looks like a fucking rock star coming off of a 757 aircraft. They're holding up air traffic so that he could fly in. As far as I'm concerned, you want to fly in on your jet? Good for you. All right. No different than anybody else who has a, an airplane. I don't care what the aircraft is. You land, you get off, you go ahead, you get into a car. I don't care if it's an Uber, if it's a Lyft. I don't care if it's your own private vehicle and you work your way through traffic like everybody else in order to get to the courthouse on time as required by the judge. Plain and simple. Instead, look at the way it's being covered, right? You got Garrett Hake is one of the lucky folks, um, and he was successful in getting uh, one of the few press passes. So he's inside one of those uh, suburban vehicles, and he's you know photographing in live in live time for us to all be able to experience what's going on here. But you're in a caravan. I mean, Donald Trump was in a motorcade on his way to the courthouse to be arraigned for the, not the first time, not the second time, but for the third time. I mean, what are we doing? We're making a potential felon into a rock star. And it's no wonder that these idiot maggots that are out there are dishing money off to him in order to support his legal fees, in order to support the guests in his aircraft. I mean, he's being made to look like if he's a rock star. Well, Stupid. let me look. Stupid. So my view by is... The way, by the way, they shut down 3rd Street in order to get him to the court as well. Meanwhile, he's being protected by the same people that he riled up his MAGA, right, fanatics, in order to attack. I mean, it's truly, it's an amazing thing, Ben, if you think about it. Here he is being protected by the same people that he was, you know winding up his supporters in order to attack. And, you know, when they went ahead and they attacked the people's house, the Capitol on January 6th, it's a disgrace. 
Well, I mean, I think there's a broader conversation to have that we had on the past episode about the $40 million that Trump grifted off of his supporters to pay for things like his airplane, Melania's hair. He may feel that he's a rock star and has the trappings of a rock star. But in my opinion, it's slightly different than yours. I mean, as we look at the federal courthouse right now, if we think about rock stars or think about a Taylor Swift concert, for example, you usually see a lot of fans lined up out there screaming and cheering his name. And I think while Donald Trump would like that to happen, that's not what's taking place in Washington, D.C. Sure, you have certain MAGA followers who are out there saying some of the most deranged stuff. And, you know, we'll show you some of the stuff that's taking place outside. But, you know, it's mostly people out there who are not supportive of him at all, who are calling him out, who are mocking him, who have inflatable stuff. Uh, things where they're, you know, mocking him. And, and and that's not consistent with what we'd see of a rock star. And yeah, you know, he has a private jet, you know, he's grifts tens of millions of dollars off of his supporters. Um, but, you know, I think when he goes in that courtroom, the federal judge is going to treat him like everybody else. Judge Chutkin is a law and order federal you, Obama. You right. And, 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 and right. so, you know, so I, I, I agree with you that the trappings of a rock star there, but I think that the fandom which he craves is is not there. Right, but remember, it's one thing when he's inside the courtroom. You and I can't see that, right? They're not going to show that. So what do we see? We see this this lardass, right, leaving Bedminster, New Jersey. Heads out to the airport, and they're following, they're capturing all of this as he gets onto a 757 aircraft, regardless of its age and its value. Okay, it makes no difference. That is a big aircraft. He gets into the air, they follow it, they talk about where he is. Oh, he's now, you know, he'll be landing in five minutes at Reagan National Airport, gets to Reagan National. The whole world is watching, all right? This is not a rock star. This is not Taylor Swift. This isn't the Beatles coming in where, you know, they're, where their, you know, where their fame should be applauded. We're talking about a guy who is now going to be before a judge to be arraigned for the third time for like, what is it, 78 counts? 80 counts against him already? Okay, look, presumption of innocence, I'm all for it. But we don't have to bring him to the courthouse like a rock star. It's that vision. It's the, it's the perception that the media and others are creating of this soon-to-be you know, convicted felon that is the basis on why the same sycophantic fools are donating money to him and why he's given the platform that he's given. And it's not tens of millions of dollars. It's over a hundred millions of dollars that he has already built out and grifted off of the most, you know, stupid people in our country. And it's just, yeah. again, it's pathetic. Let me show you what's going on outside of the courthouse right now. Um, an inflatable Trump is outside the courthouse mocking uh, Donald Trump. This, I mean, Donald Trump, though, is looking. Yes, I, I, you know, that is the way it's being covered, I think, on large media networks. But let me show you what's really going on outside of the courthouse right now. Here, Salty, play the clip. Jail! You got to be held jail! accountable. I can't go to jail. I'm all fluffy. Don't take advantage of me. You incited an uprising. No, it's okay. illegal. I'm building my own jail in New York City somewhere. I want to go. I don't want to go to jail. No. No. Okay, stand here for a minute, Trump. No. Stand here for a minute. I can't go to jail. Yep, you're at the courthouse. I got dimples. I can't go to jail. Nobody gets. All right, that's one, that's one of the best videos I've ever seen in my life. Cohen, what's your reaction to that? <laughs> you know, look, again, um, 
this this is being made into a spectacle, and the only person, in my estimation, that benefits from this spectacle is going to be Donald. Why? Well, once he finishes and he pleads not guilty and he, you know, gets back into this motorcade and they take him, you know, to his aircraft, which goes right up into the air because it's being held as if he's a somebody, right? It then ends up going back to uh, Teterboro or to uh, whatever's closest to Bedminster, wherever he's keeping the plane these days. I think it's Teterboro. And, you know, then he'll have a motorcade there that's going to take him back, you know, to the golf course where he's going to sit down. He's going to eat a very decent meal. He's going to have his sycophantic members that are going to be sitting, you know, there. When he walks in, they're going to applaud for him like, you know, he's, uh, you know, Caesar who just conquered, you know, another territory and is coming home for a victory. I mean, in fact, he is coming back to a property, yes, that he owns as now the third time indicted with almost 80 counts against him. This is not something that people should be applauding. But then again, after watching the motorcades and the police with the yeah. lights and the sirens and the shutting down of the roads, not bullshit. Let him sit in fucking traffic like everybody else on the Beltway. Yeah, you know, but I also look at, okay, who are the people clapping? Like, who are the people at Mar-a-Lago who are clapping? Like, no, this isn't Mar-a-Lago. This is Bedminster, New Jersey. Bedminster, Mar-a-Lago, any of his properties that he commits fraud and crimes on, what, whatever. You know, who are these people? And very frequently, th these people are at this point reduced to just the biggest cult members that they are. Of course, the cult members are going to clap, but these people are not credible people, I think, to most of the American population. Like, okay, I showed you that video of, of the inflatable Trump. Like, this is one of the very, like, these are the Trump supporters who are outside of the courthouse right now. You'll see how small of a crowd this is right now. And you'll see what his base is. This is a Midas Touch correspondent. Brian Karam is actually outside of the courthouse right now. And he was the one who asked this question to one of these MAGA supporters outside. Let's go to the Midas Touch correspondent, Brian Karam, right now. So can I ask you a question? You're, I, I, the, what happens? I mean, was he right about everything? No, my question is. Trump was right about everything. So if he's, what if he's convicted? Would you still vote for him? Absolutely. Convicted of what? Is there any of any of the 78 charges that he's facing felonies? Would you still vote for him? If I took a piece, if I took a shit right here, well, and if I, I cut I, it up into 78 pieces, what would I have? I'd have the same stupid piece of shit. It's irrelevant. So it doesn't <laughs> it's matter. Cut up into 78 different pieces. What if you personally witnessed him commit a crime and then he was convicted? Well, would you then happened. vote for him? So, like if he. Uh, if he had Don Jr. working for a natural gas company, no, I'm making asking $80, you, is there a any, and then started is a there war in, in Ukraine? Under any circumstance, would you not vote for him, I guess? Is no, right. absolutely not. Because he's a proven track record. He's a perfect president. He's an American hero. And he's the greatest thing that's ever happened to the American political. So if that man was clapping for me, Michael Cohen, I would be, I don't want that man clapping for me right there talking about cutting up pieces of shit. I mean, that's who the I, MAGA I Republicans you, are today. You know, Ben, I got to tell you, it's a very sad day in America when somebody as stupid as this man has the ability, even with Brian, right, to get onto any television, right, and to espouse the insanity and the stupidity that he is espousing. This is this is not to be believed. Donald Trump is an American hero? Seriously? How about I was tasked with dealing with the press in order to shut down all of the conversation when he was 4F, when he ended up getting his daddy to have a podiatrist claim that he had bone spurs in his feet. Well, it ultimately was determined that he claimed it was one foot, but he couldn't remember which foot he had the surgery on. He didn't want to go. And that's OK. I, 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 you know, everybody else went. Right. But he's sitting and he's lying. He's lying to the American people about 
being a hero, he wanted to go. He didn't want to go, right? And I could understand being afraid to go, but your number came up. And instead of doing the patriotic thing, instead of doing, for example, like what John McCain did, and I'm no fan of John McCain, let me be clear with that. All right. But John McCain fought for this country, was captured, had the shit kicked out of him for five years, refused to leave because they wanted to let him go. His father was an admiral. He said, I'm not leaving unless you let every single American that was captured with me leave as well. And they said no. So he stayed and he endured more abuse. You think Trump is that strong? You think that he would ever sacrifice himself? For anybody else? And the answer is no. In fact, if I don't know if you could find it or pull it up, Salty, but Donald was actually vocal when he said once to a reporter, why would anybody ever put their life on the line for anything other than themselves? I mean, that's the mentality of a hero. Kind of a fucking stupid moron is this guy that's standing there on the street. He's the perfect president? Really? I mean, how many things do we have to go through that he did wrong? Kissing up to our adversaries at the expense of our allies? Wanting to defund NATO? Wanting the United States to leave NATO? Wanting to turn around and to get Zelensky to find bullshit and create dirt on the Biden family during the middle of a of a presidential election, right? In order to, you know, um, disparage him. How about locking children up, taking them away from their families, right? Uh, these these uh, poor immigrants and so on. I mean, separating them to the point that there are still children that have not been reunited with their family, you know, look, I remember I tell the story all the time. I was in Florida at one of the malls with my wife and my daughter at the time, who was, what, maybe two years old. And we were looking at something. And next thing we looked down, I'm talking about a split second. And she was gone. And let me tell you, the fear, the panic that I had in my heart, the pain in my in my chest was overwhelming. I can't imagine what these people must be going through after years, not knowing whether your child is alive or dead, is with a decent family, is not living, you know, in squalor or being abused. I mean, this, these are the things that goes through a parent's mind when you don't have your child with you. And Donald didn't care. They had, they had infants in diapers that were basically separated from their families, right? And that these children then had to go before the judge. I mean, what, goo, 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 goo? Really? Seriously? What did you, I mean, this whole thing is out of control. And Donald Trump is the perfect president who lied to you over 35,000 times during his four years as a president? Get the fuck out of here, you stupid. I mean, in all fairness, we should really have a test. And a test should be for whether you can and you can't vote, because this guy is clearly one of the dumbest human beings that our unfortunate system of education has produced. We should find that, out what the asshole does for a living. Uh, what he does for a living is follow around Donald Trump, probably goes to Trump rallies and probably gets a lot of money from government programs that he rails against. If I were to take a guess of what he does, we can confirm right here now on the Midas Touch Network that Donald Trump is now officially under arrest. He has been placed in federal custody on the criminal charges for the four count indictment brought by special counsel Jack Smith. Trump is now undergoing the digital fingerprinting uh, process that we outlined earlier uh, in the show. Trump now faces a total of 78 felony charges across the three criminal cases so far in New York. The hush money payments to a porn star case where my co-host Michael Cohen is a key witness there. 
34 charges for falsifying business records, maximum prison time, four years. The other Department of Justice case down in the Southern District of Florida for the mishandling of national defense information, willful retention. Uh, we're talking there 32 counts for willful retention of national defense information, six counts for obstruction of justice, and two for false statements, uh, 10 years for each count, over 400 years for the for that case. And over here, the attempt to overturn the 2020 election, which he's being arraigned today, which we're bringing you live coverage as we learn more. Two counts for obstructing an official proceeding, one for conspiracy against the right to vote, one for defrauding the United States. Again, uh, uh, crimes that carry with it very, very long uh, sentences. So 78 felony charges across the cases, uh, across the cases there. Um, Donald Trump now attacking the judge just moments before he entered uh, the courthouse. This is what he posted on his social media platform. He said, Biden and his family steal millions and millions of dollars, including bribes from foreign countries. And I'm headed to D.C. to be arrested for protesting a crooked election, unfair venue, unfair judge. We are a nation in decline, MAGA. That was posted just moments before he walked into the courthouse, uh, attacking federal judge Chutkin uh, right there. Again, disturbing trend that we see from Donald Trump over and over again. Pull up some of the other. By the way, posts. you see this guy that's in the main section there on uh, it says Blacks for Trump. This is a mm -hmm. guy who's actually paid. I don't know. Remember his face, and every time that you see him, he will always be over Trump's it's um camera right. He and the other guy that's behind him, they travel to various different Trump events. They're paid. They're they're literally paid actors in order to it's it's amazing. You'll see if you if you pull up any of the uh you know, any of these um what do you call the rallies that Trump you know, goes to, you'll always see this guy and the guy that's behind him. There's a whole slew of them that get, that get paid, right? If you take a look at the crowd, other than these two yo-yos, right? What does it look like to you? Especially when you think about the guy who was making the statement that he was making to Brian Karam. It's a Klan rally. Don't they understand that this whole group of individuals are nothing more than a bunch of racist, sexist, misogynistic, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic morons, right, that have finally found a furor, right, within which to sit and to salute to. And, you know, to call him a perfect president, holy shit. I mean, you know, the funny thing is, for so many years, all of these lunatics have been put into a box. And what did Donald do? What did he and his MAGA morons ultimately do? They opened up Pandora's box. And as a result of opening up Pandora's box, they unleashed the things that America had pushed aside that we we tried to to bury we tried to be better as a country and basically as a result of Donald's four years of legitimately having no moral compass whatsoever he's allowed us as a country to regress a hundred years and I you think know what? about that mo yeah. what we need to do Ben we thank God for our for our brigaders. Thank God for this show and for, you know, the other Midas Touch Network shows and Maya Culpa soon to be on Midas Touch Network. You know, I got to tell you, thank God for this because what will ultimately happen is we will figure out how to shove this foolishness, this stupidity, this racism and so on right back into the box and seal it, hopefully for good. I think about that moment in the 2008 presidential campaign, McCain versus Obama, right? Where there was a person in the crowd saying these hateful and racist things about Obama. Mm -hmm. McCain took the microphone away. We're, we're saying we're better than that as Americans. Now the MAGA Republicans all get microphones and they shout and yell far worse things than were even said at that uh, rally that was held by John McCain. Someone who took the mic away from the hate, Donald Trump, someone who gives the microphone 
to hateful people. And Donald Trump, of course, spreading the hate himself. You know, when I think about that post that Donald Trump just made as he was heading into the courtroom saying, you know, all these bribes from foreign countries, you know, the big witness that MAGA Republican said was going to confirm the bribes right after all these fake whistleblowers after saying the bribes are on 17 audio recordings. They're on the audio. Well, the audio recordings don't exist. The whistleblowers don't exist. They're fake whistleblowers. One's a Russian oligarch who even contradicts what the MAGA Republicans say. One is just been or was indicted last year for being an unregistered foreign agent of China who doesn't have any information. But, you know, they had this big hearing with Hunter Biden's business partner, right? He's going to tell everything. And this deposition testimony was just released. And Hunter Biden's ex-business partner like basically said the exact opposite of what the MAGA Republicans said. Joe Biden never would get involved in anything of Hunter. Joe Biden was as professional as can be. And I would tell everybody just the evidence matters. So you could go and read that full deposition transcript. We have it posted on the new Midas Touch website, MidasTouch.com, the number one source of pro-democracy news. You know, Michael Cohen, we did a soft launch of MidasTouch.com when the indictment was announced. Did you know that it's already getting five to six times as much traffic as most of the legacy media news sites and some of the big startups that have been funded with all this outside investor money? We don't have any of that. We just have the brigaders. We have this community. But MidasTouch.com for your pro-democracy news. Check it out every day and make sure to make it your homepage. That's MidasTouch.com. This just moments ago, Alina Haba outside the courthouse in D.C. Here is what she is talking about. I want to play this clip of Alina Haba, then I want to get your response, Michael Cohen, to it. Let's play this clip of Haba. On March 17th, Hunter accidentally admits that it was his laptop from hell. The next day, D.A. Alvin Bragg indicts President Trump. June 8th, an FBI document is released showing that the Ukrainians paid the Biden crime family millions and millions of dollars. The next day, the Mar-a-Lago raid and the Mar-a-Lago indictment. Cohen. Look, there's really not a whole lot to say. Uh, after they released the quarterlies uh, for the pack, and you saw she got paid like a million five, um, you know, from the Trump pack. And on top of that, she's now allegedly moved into Mar a Lago. Um, you know, what kind of or shit is that? <laughs> where, the, where the fuck is Melania? What is she thinking? There's Melania 2.0 over here, you know, talk about, you know, Melania spent what over a hundred thousand dollars on hair extensions. Yeah, well. I don't think it was all on Melania. I think Aline is wearing hair extensions there too. The last time I saw her, she had, you know, a very, you know, cute little, uh, cute little Bob uh, and so on. But either way, think about what we're talking about here. He needs full-time counsel as a babysitter. I mean, what about her husband? What about uh, what about Alina's, you know, uh, husband? What about her family? Are they moving into Mar-a-Lago too? I don't know if, if I mean, obviously, I've been there many, many times. You're not talking about sprawling, spacious, um, you know, rooms. They're small, uh, you know, like 300, 400 square foot hotel rooms. Uh, yeah. You know? So where is where is she living? Why is she living there? First of all, Mar-a-Lago is not zoned for this type of use. It is a social club and you're not allowed to stay there, I think, for more than 10 days uh, out of a year. That's part of the zoning. Now, Donald somehow managed to get that, um, you know, overturned for him. Well, now he's bringing in people to live there with him. I don't listen. Like I said, nothing in this group makes any sense at all. It is just one wackadoodle sort of thing after another. And if she is, you know, good for her. I mean, good for him. Good for both of them. I don't get it. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. But what does he need? He needs a 24-7 cheerleader, first of all. I if you take a look at, for example, the indictment. Right. There are statements in there which they attribute to Trump 
or said by Trump. And somebody uh, this morning, I think it was on CNN, went through each of those statements and there were 21 lies. What what Alina is saying right now is not accurate. All right. It's just absolutely. If you want to make a claim that Hunter Biden took money. First of all, Hunter Biden's not the president of the United States, nor is he running for the presidency. Let's put that to the side for one split second. If he took money improperly, if he violated FARA, the Foreign Agent Registration Act, then he needs to be held accountable. I am the last one to say that he should be, you know, relieved of any and all legal obligation if he did something wrong. We have heard now for how many years about this Hunter Biden laptop? How many years have we heard about this? Four? Maybe a little more? I ask each and every one of the brigaders, Google. Google Hunter Biden's laptop. Other than, unfortunately, the uh, the porno flick, the X-rated scenario, right, of Hunter Biden, show me what you're talking about, Alina, show us any evidence, really any evidence that Hunter Biden took money from Ukraine and that Hunter Biden used whatever relationship that he had you know, going for him, whether it was Burisma or anybody else, and that he asserted that relationship into the White House for a benefit. And you can't do it. You can't do it because it doesn't exist. This is fodder. This is bullshit. And the problem is so many people continue to say it. Members of Congress, lawyers, you know, Fox, OAN, Newsmax, they just keep repeating it. They put it out on social media platforms. And ultimately, people like this dope, the one that Brian Karam was speaking to, what they do is they start speaking to the people at their local bar, and it spreads faster, right? It's like a rumor. It'll spread from East Coast to West Coast faster than a telephone call. And what a shame, because again, it is not real. It is. It has been disproven what they're saying. And then Alina Haba, given, given a platform to speak and to speak lies, this is really problematic. How do you know what's real and how do you know what's not real? And the problem is that's it's really a media issue, to be very honest with you. And I think it's one of the reasons why this network, why Midas Touch, why Political Beatdown is as successful as it is, is because you're not getting a spin here from us. You may not like my point of view because I see there's some people comments here. Oh, I'm a loser. I don't give a crap what you call me. Right. What I'm saying to you is factually accurate. And if you know how to use Google, which is not that difficult, just fucking look it up for yourself. And don't look it up on OAN or Newsmax. Why don't you look it up on any legitimate news source? Just look it up. And when you do, post it. All right? Post it. But since you can't, don't make it up. And that's the thing, you know, when they want to talk about, oh, the thugs, derange this, derange that. Look, I am open to actual evidence and witnesses and facts. And if those facts were to show that someone who I'm generally supportive of did something bad, I would acknowledge that that is bad and I would want there to be accountability. But the constant lies, the constant gaslighting over and over again is coming from one side. It's coming from the MAGA Republicans. It's not really a both sides issue, which large media networks try to make it out to be. And, and, and just look, one of the segments I do every morning here on the Midas Touch Network and the Midas Mighty really gave me this idea is compare and contrast. What is Donald Trump saying today? What is President Joe Biden saying? As President Joe Biden says, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. I know lots of people, the first video they watch in the morning are those comparison videos, and I take them very seriously. And I'll, I'll show you, Cohen, what I do, because I think that contrast is so important. This is what Donald Trump has been posting today. So one of his first posts 
was just the, the, the number symbol, you know, just hashtag, hashtag, because he was, um, I, I don't know, just woke up in a bad mood. And then he wrote over here, um, I need one more indictment to ensure my election. Like that's actually a post that he made. Yeah, I he need needs one more indictment in order to raise more money off of the same stupid, you know, people as the guy that Brian was speaking to. I like this that. This is all trend. deflection. This I is like all that. nonsense. You see, you see, salty doing those like those, yeah, not, I like that. those I, elegant job, transitions man. right there. Let's all, I, give, I, let's all give a thumbs up uh, to salty do for the, doing such a great they, job. They do the you know, they do the salty emoji. I want to show you. I want to show you one more. Um, this is what Trump posted. Also, he goes, I'm now going to Washington, D.C. to be arrested for having there it goes again for having challenged a corrupt, rigged and stolen election. It is a great honor because I am being arrested for you. Make America great again. And then you compare him just to the post that like President Biden uh, is making and, and Biden's like for the millions of veterans who have been exposed to harmful toxins, the PACT Act means quicker access to health care and another post. Some say America used to be the largest manufacturer in the world, but now we can't compete. I've never believed that we led the world in manufacturing and we're doing it again with my investing in America agenda. Biden investment in America manufacturing facilities contributed more to our economy's growth than it has in 40 years. And again, I want to thank all the Midas Mighty out there for that idea of really comparing and contrasting, because, yes, it's important we call Trump out for all of his conduct, but we should reflect on what normalcy looks like and what it means to actually deliver and do things for the people. And as you and I say all the time, we may disagree with a lot of things that Biden does or Democrats do. It's not about that. It's like, are you responsibly trying to come up with an agenda that helps people and delivers things? Or are you making these posts like Donald Trump where here, here's the last one that Donald Trump said. And I guess this is going to be one of their strategies um, after this arraignment where they're going to lose. Um, he goes, the latest fake case brought by crooked Joe Biden and deranged Jack Smith will hopefully be moved to an impartial venue such as the politically unbiased nearby state of West Virginia impossible to get a fair trial in Washington, D.C., which is over 95 percent anti-Trump and for which I have called for a federal takeover in order to bring our capital back to greatness. It is now a high crime embarrassment to our nation and indeed the world. The indictment is all about election interference. And then so now you got to connect the dots, right? Many of our viewers may be saying, why was it <laughs> that the MAGA Republicans and all these committees for the past few months have been devoting all their time to attacking Washington, D.C. Remember, Cohen, all these hearings about like public urination yep. and, and, and yep. why were they attacking D.C. the way they were? Why were they saying that, you know, D.C. is this and that? Oh, got it. They were trying to protect Donald Trump so Trump can make arguments like this. By the way, for everybody wondering if Donald Trump will prevail in a venue change motion, I could give you 100% certainty that he will not prevail in that motion. There have been numerous, numerous people who have made this same motion who were in the January 6th insurrection, and even the Trump-appointed judges who have made many bad rulings on lots of these January 6th cases, they found that the uh, factors for a venue change were not met in those cases. And D.C. Circuit precedent does not justify a change of venue here at all. That will be swiftly rejected when that motion is brought. And then Donald Trump will go back to whining and saying, oh, it's Judge Chutkin. It's unfair. Everybody's unfair against Donald Trump. Every woe is me. And then just whining every day. But no chance Donald Trump wins that motion. Based it's on also DC because precedent. he knows he knows he's not going to win that motion. He also knows that he is going to be held accountable for the vast majority of these 78 counts. And, you know, every one of these counts comes with a jail, a jail sentence. So right now he's brave or he's trying to make the appearance of bravery. Oh, it doesn't bother me. It's my third. I'm used to it already, right? Send me $50, 100 5000 whatever the 
whatever it is, right? He's trying to show that he's tough and he's brave. As this thing progresses and they move closer, for example, March of 2024, the Manhattan District Attorney case is going to trial. Now, I don't care what anybody says. I saw Cy Vance was on TV this morning. I uh, listened to a couple of other pundits say, I don't think that that's going to result in, um, it will result in a conviction. However, they don't think it will result in jail time or um, a, a sentence uh, that would require him, whether it's uh, jail time or some form of a home confinement scenario. I totally disagree. And I love how the pundits who don't know shit, they have no real information other than the same things that are floating around out there. Because the one thing I can tell you about all of these investigations is that you know only as much as they want you to know. And I can tell you, knowing the documentation and the testimony, he's got real troubles as it relates to just that. And that is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, on a one out of five, that is the number five, right? Number one, probably being the January 6th insurrection of seditious conspiracy. But we're looking at just with these three indictments over 500 potential years of incarceration. That's a pretty long time, you know, for a, for a guy who's 78 years old. Um, you know, look, it's it, the whole thing is, again, been out of control. Um, Allowing these, uh, you know, just allowing these folks, you know, to see Trump get paraded through as if he was a rock star, superstar, or somebody of significance. He's a nobody as far as I'm concerned. He's a traitor to our country. He's a traitor to democracy. He is an absolute embarrassment to our country as far as the world sees it. Um, yeah. We should not be, we should not be bolstering his ego because that's what he's that's what he's seen this until he gets home and then he realizes holy shit i'm in some pretty big trouble what we should be doing though is making sure everybody reads on midastouch.com the full indictment because it is so surgical in how it was written it is so detailed it is so fact and evidence-based Make sure you go to MidasTouch.com. That is the new home of all things Midas Touch. The same way that the Midas Touch Network has become number one on YouTube and this show right now, number one in the world across all news right now, thanks to you, the Midas Mighty and the Beatdown Brigaders, the MidasTouch.com. View it as kind of a compliment to our YouTube. When you go there, you could follow along with the document. So in a little bit, we're going to be talking about the indictment. So you go to MidasTouch.com, check out the indictment. You can check out deposition testimony. When we cover things, we're going to post all of the you know, kind of other documents there. And I want to talk, Cohen, though, quickly just about what we know has happened right now in the past 30 seconds in the courtroom and over the past few minutes as well. Um, so we know that Donald Trump was already arrested. He was taken into custody as part of the, uh, the process that takes place before the arraignment. The digital fingerprinting took place. Um, court observers were saying that Donald Trump was sitting at the defense table all alone. No one else uh, was, was there. He was sitting there all alone. Trump is sitting in special counsel Jack Smith's direct line of sight in the courtroom. And Smith almost certainly just looked at Trump. We know from the last arraignment that a special counsel Jack Smith was looking directly at Donald Trump and he just and Trump had his arms crossed and refused to look at special counsel Jack Smith in the eyes. And Jack Smith just kept on looking directly at Trump and Trump was a coward. And he was just looking down the whole time and refusing to make eye contact with special counsel Jack Smith. Also, we know that three officers who served on January 6th, they are present and watching the arraignment from an overflow room at the courthouse. They were escorted in by the marshal's service. And then again, Trump sitting there all alone. One thing I want to talk to you, though, Cohen, about is in the case that Donald Trump filed against you, um, where you will be taking Donald Trump's deposition next month, September a big 6th. deposition. September 6th, you said? September yeah. 6th. September 6th. Donald Trump's lawyer just filed a motion for a protective order mm -hmm. 
citing that Trump is afraid to have that deposition released publicly because of embarrassment and because of the criminal cases he is involved in. So he wants to keep the deposition that you're taking of him secret. Now, you want that to be available to the brigaders, to the public. After all, as well as all the filed, do- as well as all the documents that are being all requested the documents. by my he counsel. Filed He filed the lawsuit against you. So what I want to understand is, from your perspective, what is your response to this protective order motion filed by Donald Trump? I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the indictment. And we're going to have a lot more information about the arraignment right after this quick break. Support for Midas is brought to you by Manscaped, who has the best in men's below-the-waist grooming products. That's right, their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Join over 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code BEAT at manscaped.com. Look, everyone knows that you have to be careful when dealing with the family jewels. You definitely don't want to use an old crusty electric trimmer. Yikes! That's why I'm so excited to partner with Manscaped. Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 has arrived, and oh man, it's a game changer. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Reserver Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. First off, the Lawnmower 4.0, this trimmer is the future of grooming, and dare I say, the greatest below the waist trimmer ever? Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has 4,000K LED spotlights you'll need for a more precise shave. And because this trimmer is waterproof, you can say goodbye to the mess on the bathroom floor. You thought that was good, but want to take your grooming game to the next level? The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. The Weed Whacker is also waterproof and provides proprietary skin safe technology, which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate nose holes. Their Crop Preserver Deodorant and Crop Reviver Toner will change the way you approach your hygiene routine. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Bring your comfort and boxers to another level. It's time to take care of yourself, so go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with code BEAT. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code BEAT. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Ben Mycel is here. Breathe some life into your own backyard with FastGrowingTrees.com this spring. From shade to fresh fruit to privacy and natural beauty, let FastGrowingTrees.com help you plant your dream garden with their expert advice and fast, reliable shipping. FastGrowingTrees.com's plant experts Curate thousands of easy-to-grow plant, shrub, and tree varieties for your unique climate. Meyer lemons to evergreens and everything in between. Happy plants, happy home, right? But sometimes it's hard to know which plants will do best. No problem, because with FastGrowingTrees.com, you get customized recommendations based on your specific needs. Plus, their plant experts are always available to help keep your plants growing healthy through the season and beyond. No more waiting in long lines and hauling heavy plants around. With FastGrowingTrees.com, you order online and your plants arrive at your door in just a few days. I love Fast Growing Trees because I found the Alberta peach tree I was looking for at a great price, and you will too. And with Fast Growing Trees 30 Day Alive and Thrive guarantee, you know everything will look great fresh out of the box. Join over 1.5 million happy Fast Growing Trees customers. So go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash political now to get 15% off your entire order. Get 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash political. That's fastgrowingtrees.com dot com slash political and now back to the show welcome back political beatdown ben mycel is joined by the one and only michael cohen donald trump has been arrested we're live 
outside of the D.C. federal courthouse where Donald Trump is being arraigned. We expect that process to take between 30 and 40 minutes. Donald Trump has gone through the digital fingerprinting process that has taken place. Donald Trump was spotted sitting alone at counsel's table. I guess his lawyers had not yet arrived yet. Special counsel Jack Smith looking at Donald Trump. Again, Donald Trump with his arms crossed, refusing to look at special counsel Jack Smith, a keyboard warrior in Donald Trump, but in person, clearly scared of special counsel Jack Smith. Where we left off is the case that Donald Trump filed against you, Michael Cohen, for $500 million. It's a frivolous case, but nonetheless, a case that is of significance in your life. Being sued for $500 million in federal court is never an easy thing. Special thanks to all the brigaders and all the Midas Mighty out there who have contributed to Cohen's legal defense fund. That's in the description below if you're able to contribute to his legal defense fund. Cohen's been able to hire some of the top lawyers thanks to your contributions who have been doing an excellent job. And Donald Trump's lawyers, not the best and brightest in the case, just my opinion. Nope. But they're certainly able. getting paid a lot of money, aren't they? They're right. getting paid a ton of money. But here's the protective order motion that they filed. And they say in this protective order motion that because of Donald Trump's, I kid you not, this is in the motion, fear of embarrassment. He sued you for $500 because of his fear of you embarrassing him at the deposition. And because of the criminal proceedings, he wants the whole thing to be secret. What say you in response, Michael Cohen? I say you can't have it both ways. That's not the way the system works. Um, they don't want to turn over any of the documents or most of the documents that my lawyers have requested uh, in our discovery order uh, for the sole purpose that they are afraid that, that those documents uh, could be released, that those documents may incriminate Trump in some of these other legal matters. And again, I just need to scratch my head and say, seriously? So you bring a $500 million frivolous lawsuit against somebody and you expect me to do what? You expect me to roll over, to start to cry, to say to myself, oh, oh my God, Donald Trump is suing me and so on. Listen, I know the game. I know his game. It was all based upon retaliation. All right. He's now put himself into a situation where, as the plaintiff, you are required to move the case forward to be deposed. You may remember, Brigaders, that, and I said this in previous episodes, that Donald wanted to have the deposition 90 days post the election, which would be about 16, 17 months from now. Well, that's obviously not realistic, uh, nor was I going to permit that, nor was my counsel. And so, again, he is now required to sit for this recorded uh, and transcribed deposition on September 6th. And I promise you, my lawyer, Danya Perry and Benjamin Brodsky, they're already in the works. They're, they've already have in the works the, you know, the um, development of the questions that they intend to ask. It is going to be a incredibly, incredibly thorough, thorough, um, you know, deposition of Donald, which I, I promise you he doesn't want. And I promise <laughs> that if I am permitted, I will be I will be releasing this information because First of all, I think it m most of it is going to be funny as shit, right? I mean, listening to him trying to lie, uh, you know, his way out of, you know, um, out of an answer. But it also is going to demonstrate once again that I am providing accurate and truthful information that the one who is dishonest, the one who refuses to tell the truth on anything is Donald J. Trump, a guy who looks like he may be once again the presumptive Republican nominee. So and here's what he's putting in his so again, motion. To everybody who donated, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and we will keep this thing going. Uh, if you can, please, as Ben said, I know there's a link there. Uh, beyond appreciate, I, you know, it is desperately needed. We need to keep this case going. It's all about the accountability. Absolutely is. And accountability means reading 
these filings, right? That's why we also created MidasTouch.com because yes, on our YouTubes, I go through the filings, but obviously they're a finite length. So everybody go to MidasTouch.com, the new home of the Midas Touch Network's coverage. Of course, we have our YouTube. Nothing's changing with that. View MidasTouch.com as a complement to what we do here on YouTube. And already on our soft launch alone, it has gotten five to six times as many views as some of the large media network websites already. Thanks to you. And we've got some great reporters and editors there. But look, when you look at the document itself and specifically like page six of this protective order motion, that that Donald Trump filed about why he wants to keep the deposition confidential in a case he sued you for $500 million. Here's what he says. Page six, it says plaintiffs ongoing. And he's the plaintiff in this case, because he's suing you. Trump's ongoing criminal proceedings establish a legitimate basis for the entry of a confidentiality order. And it says the fifth amendment privilege against self-incrimination shields one asserting that privilege from being incriminated by his or her compelled testimonial communications. The protection applies equally to witnesses in a civil and criminal proceedings alike. Thus, a party protected by the privilege may rightfully refuse to answer unless and until he is protected, at least against the use of his compelled answers and evidence derived therefrom in any subsequent criminal case in which he is a defendant. He's suing you. He is suing you and then asserting the fifth in the case where he is suing you. That is an argument that they are making. This says Donald Trump is being arraigned right now in federal court. I want to call into our coverage, renowned legal scholar, another Michael. We've got Michael Popak here. Popak, you see these transitions. <laughs> Loud and noisy. Popak is in New York. I hear, you know, it's a real New Yorker uh, <laughs> right there with Michael Cohen, a real New Yorker as well. So, Popak, your observations so far about what's gone on today in this uh, arraignment process. Yeah, well, we have reporting right now that the magistrate judge, uh, Padaya, has asked Trump his name. He responded haltingly with, yes, your honor, Donald J. Trump, John just in case we didn't know what his middle name is. He said he was 77. She asked me if he was on drugs today. I think the emphasis there is on today. And he said he is not. So he's being treated like any other common criminal that's being arraigned in front of a magistrate with a couple, so of, interesting, couple of interesting twists. Judge Bozberg, whose courtroom is being used, the chief judge who oversees all things grand jury, decided to make an appearance and watch uh, the magistrate judge do her arraignment, which is quite unusual. It just shows you the historic nature of the arraignment. The other weird people in the room is what is Evan Corcoran, who is a, uh, a lawyer in the Mar-a-Lago case, used to be formerly a lawyer in the Mar-a-Lago case, who has now testified uh, against Donald Trump, in effect, for the federal government and turned over 50 pages of copious notes. He's still there sitting and watching. Stephen Chung, that... Uh, uh, um, uh, the omniscient uh, spokesperson. <laughs> He's there ready, I guess, to crank out some pre-recorded message. They handed out some palm cards to the traveling press on their way in. It was just Hunter Biden on the left and, uh, and all of these, uh, you know, the DA in New York, the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, Letitia James, this one, that one. I mean, what does this have to do with anything? And it doesn't have anything to do with the arraignment today. Todd Blanche and John Lauro are sandwiching a very unhappy looking Donald Trump. He's been he's been reported as clenching and unclenching his hands turning his head left and right and sideways, trying to stare down Jack Smith. Good luck on trying to win a stare contest with Jack Smith. I think he invented the game. It's like trying to beat, you know, uh, Tony uh, Chestnut at hot dog eating at Nathan's. Not happening. Uh, Blanche went over and greeted because, you know, these are the cordial things you're supposed to do. The prosecution team represented by Tom Wyndham, J.P. Cooney and Molly uh, Gaston, who are the main lawyers that are trying the case, they were ruffling through papers, getting ready for the arraignment. They looked up and said, okay, great, and went back to their papers. And, and then, you know, you just have this 
a newly appointed magistrate judge. She's got a long history in public service and doing pro bono work. Just, you know, chopping wood, doing her job, processing. And something new for the first time in any of the indictments or arraignments, Donald Trump was fingerprinted. It was digital fingerprinting, but he was fingerprinted. No mugshot yet. So uh, he can't be happy. And, and, and Maggie Haberman, to, to, to end it on this, has been reporting today that those closest to Donald Trump, who seem to like to talk to Maggie Haberman of the New York Times on a regular basis, reported that this is the most despondent they have ever seen former guy, that he this indictment, which once and for all says he lost the election and he knows he lost the election, is, is the one that's keeping him up at night. And look, he's got this, I don't know, he thinks it's the dream team. John Lauro, for me, has been too smart by half in every public appearance I've seen him make. He looks like just today's version of Joe Tacopina, slightly thinner version, but that's about it. And Todd Blanche, who, look, has had a <laughs> relatively successful career. He's gotten like Paul Manafort off of some state crimes in the past. He's got a small practice here in New York with him and another guy. I get it. But, you know, they're up against and I've I've been there and, and John and uh, Ben, you've been there and, and Michael, you've been around it. When you're up against the federal government, the weight and awe-inspiring power and you're on the other side of that, that asymmetrical warfare where they basically have everything at their disposal, including information and witnesses. And you don't have that. You know, it even even Donald Trump has to wake up out of that, out of his uh, having dinner with Fox News the other night when the indictment was um, unsealed. This is this is cold water on him. And every time he talks tough, including right up the courthouse steps when he's in the courtroom, to me, he is shrunken. He is down to size. He's about he looks about four foot tall. He's sweaty. Speaking of sweaty, last comment, Boris Epstein, once again. <laughs> Makes another appearance striding along the parking lot on his way in. He is co-conspirator number six and likely could have his own. If he likes what's, what he's watching right now, the Justice Department will be happy to give him his own version. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is breaking news that Trump just entered a not guilty plea that just took place. As we learn more, if there are going to now be conditions placed following the arraignment, uh, we will report on that. But Michael Cohen, back to you. You've heard some of the updates from Michael Popak there recounting everything that took place. So indeed, tr the magistrate judge treating Donald Trump like he's no different than anyone else. Trump, despondent, uncomfortable, scared, sweaty. What's your response? Well, if they really wanted to treat him like everybody else, he wouldn't be walked into the courthouse one, two, three, they put him into a holding cell until the magistrate is ready for Donald to be brought in to read the arraignment uh, and for Donald's plea. I mean, that's the way that the average person would go through it. Donald, of course, is not the average person. Uh, so, you know, for the most part, yes, they are treating him as they would treat anyone but I go back to what I had said before. I don't believe that there should be any deviation at all in terms of uh, how he is being treated today. He should not be treated any differently than if it was you, certainly when it was me or if it was Popic. Um, you know, it's it's just not it's not right. Uh, we have one set of laws for all of us, as we like to say, uh, as Democrats, no one is above the law and Donald should be treated accordingly. So now is Donald Trump nervous? Fuck. Yeah. OK, let me be very clear again. He is a texting tough guy. This is the guy who will go on his truth social and he will say things deranged Jack Smith, you know, he will call uh, Alvin Bragg, Tish James, you know, racists. He uses all of these wonderful adjectives. Again, all deflection. It means absolutely nothing. It means nothing to anyone other than Donald, who feels like he's getting something off of his chest. And it means something to his supporters. He has riled up his support base literally since the announcement of this indictment. Now, I had told you that, you know, I still receive these emails from the Trump campaign uh, that come to, you know, my, my cell. And 
if I haven't received a hundred of these requests, dear Patriot, dear American, uh, whether it's coming from Donald, whether it's coming from Don Jr., from Eric, from this, it, it makes no difference. They just keep coming every 30 seconds, every 60 seconds, you're receiving another text, another, another request for more and more money. You know, this is turning out to be the greatest grift of all. I mean, it's, it, it's mind boggling how they have set up this grift and the fact that there are so many people that are still making these small dollar donations, you know, to, uh, to Donald, especially after you read the indictment. And again, I'm presuming that any of them have read the indictment. The fact is what they do is they listen to Donald's bullshit. They listen to like Lara Trump sit there and talk about how this is, you know, the, Worst day in American history. Yeah, I'm not really sure I agree with that one, Lara. Uh, you start to listen to some of the other folks like Jim Jordan, you know, that want to go out there or Marjorie Toilet Green and they want to they, they defend Donald's actions, read the indictment and then turn around and say, what's more important to you? Is, the, is America's democracy and the future of our country more important to you than your support for Donald Trump, a man who is trying to basically destroy our Constitution, to rewrite our Constitution, to destroy democracy, create an autocracy with him as the leader? Could you imagine? Should be a very simple answer. Absolutely. And so while Donald Trump is being arraigned and now has been arraigned in a federal courthouse in Washington, D.C., in Fulton County, we are now learning that the main road around the Fulton County courthouse in Atlanta, Georgia, is set to close to general traffic starting Monday morning, the Fulton County Sheriff's Office announced uh, just moments ago, we expect there to be an indictment there in Fulton County by the district attorney, Fawny Willis. Um, I want to show you, we're going to go to Michael Popak in just a moment about the updates that we have that are taking place inside the courthouse in Washington, D.C., where we are learning more information about the conditions that have now been placed. Um, but first, let me show you what's taking place outside of the courthouse. And uh, this is what is going on outside the courthouse. You see a lot of people out there mocking Donald Trump. Let's uh, play this clip. You gotta be held no. accountable. I can't go to jail. I'm all fluffy. Don't take advantage of me. You incited an uprising. No, it's okay. illegal. I'm building my own jail in New York City somewhere. I wanna go. I don't wanna go to jail. No. No. Okay, stand here for a minute, Trump. No. Stand here for a minute. I can't go to jail. Yep, you're at the courthouse. I got dimples. <laughs> I can't go to jail. Nobody can. All right, I, ha I had to work in that video just a second time. It had no place being there. I just, I just, it just really made me laugh the first time. Popak, tell us uh, about the. Uh, <laughs> this I'm is the act I have time. to follow: the inflatable <laughs> doll Donald Trump walking around in front of the courthouse. But that, you know what? You come for the legal analysis, but you stay for the inflatable dolls. So Popak, listen, what, do we, what have we learned? Here's the conditions of release uh, that were announced as Tom Windham, the lead trial lawyer for the uh, for the uh, uh, government on this case, told the judge that the parties have agreed that as a condition of release, Trump must not, he must agree not to violate federal or state law, that's a standard condition, must appear in court as directed and must sign an appearance bond, meaning he won't have to post money, but he'll have to post an appearance bond. He must not communicate with anyone he knows to be a witness. That's a new condition. That's one they picked up from Mar-a-Lago and the magistrate judge down there when they arraigned him. They hadn't originally asked for Donald Trump to have that condition, but now they're continuing with it here. Must not communicate with anyone he knows to be a witness. I'm sure we'll have some fine points on that later on, except through his lawyers or in the presence of his lawyers. Um, and they did not ask for any type of surrender of his passport or any other condition of release. 
But again, they did follow through and ask him not to make con demand that he not make contact with witnesses. And uh, the magistrate judge then warned Donald Trump. That's what federal judges in black robes get to do. They get to warn people before them about violating the conditions of the release, told him to listen carefully that if he failed to comply, a warrant may be issued for his arrest. The conditions of release may be revoked and he may be held pending trial pre-trial detention, would that be lovely, and receive a longer sentence. He could also be charged with contempt of court. She asked him if he if he was prepared to comply with those conditions, conditions he had not really seen. I'm sure some of it was worked out before, but some of this is hallway justice sort of worked out on the way into the courtroom. He may have only seen it a minute or two before. She asked him if he complied with those conditions. He nodded and he said yes. He then had to sign the documents listing the conditions of the release. And as soon as they're on the electronic docket, here on the Midas Touch Network. We'll pull it off and look for any other details that we've missed. Um, and he has to get sworn in again. To, you know, he was sworn under oath again on the conditions. She set a court date, uh, kind of a control date in the future when she wants to know how the parties are doing. Uh, let's put a pin on that as we talk about Judge Tanya Chutkin and what she's going to do next. And, <clears throat> and unless she said this is the control date unless the district judge, meaning Judge Chutkin, relieves him of that responsibility. So it's on the docket where, where, where this magistrate judge is holding the ring. The next step, though, would be, uh, now that he's been arraigned and he gets to walk out, having been released from a, uh, arrest, custodial arrest, on these conditions and under these conditions, then we'll see what Judge Chutkin does next in her orders because she's going to want to get everybody into the courtroom very, very quickly and set and talk about speedy trial. When the Sixth Amendment right to a speedy trial, when is the date going to be set? What is the necessity for additional time? She'll hear from both sides. And we will get soon. Uh, I don't think it's going to be this week, but next week we could get, or the week after, we could get a trial date and there's going to be now the new tug of war that we'll all have to watch here on the Midas Touch Network, which is going to be the tug of war between John Loro saying it's ridiculous 70 or 90 days to try this case. They've been investigating for two and a half years. How could they possibly try it in that amount of time? And the federal government saying, yeah, it's one defendant, four counts, three conspiracies and six unindicted co-conspirators. We can try this case before the election. We have to try this case before the election because justice denied is uh, justice delayed is just is denied and judge chutkin who's very good at all things jan 6th having having sentenced to the highest sentences possible even above what the department of justice has asked for other co-conspirators for donald trump is gonna likely set this trial if i had to make a prediction i want to hear from you and michael she's going to set this trial on a trial docket of course not in march when the uh, and manhattan da is doing their case on stormy daniels and not in may when Judge uh, Eileen Cannon has now set the date for Mar-a-Lago, but some other time during primary season and well before the election, there is going to be the Jan 6th omnibus trial of Donald Trump based on today's arraignment and the unsealing of the indictment. You know, special yeah, you know, counsel- it's funny because I, I'll tell you, Pulpit, uh, I believe, so you have March of 2024 is the Alvin Bray case. Um, you have May of 2024, is the other uh, Jack Smith case. You know, any day now we're going to see another indictment coming down. That'll be from Fulton County, Georgia, from Fannie Willis, uh, their district attorney there. We're going to see that. Uh, who knows when the January 6th one will ultimately show itself. But I think that this case will be sometime. I really do. I believe that it'll be um, sometime in June the latest will be July of 2024. You know, these rocket dockets are fantastic. And they could, Lauro can make whatever claims that he wants about the fairness and so on. And he'll look to try to make some motions, which will, of course, uh, in their mind, they're going to think it's going to delay the inevitable, but it won't, especially not uh, with this judge, especially not with the judge also that exists in the case uh, here in New York with uh, D 
FDA Alvin Bragg. We have no clue what's going to happen with the Eileen Cannon scenario. Would she give him additional time? Sure, she'll claim it's fair and reasonable. But then again, you know, that's what, 60, 90 day difference. So instead of uh, this new Jack Smith matter uh, coming in in July, uh, it'll come not third, but it'll come second. It It's really all irrelevant at this time. It's just a matter of time before accountability ultimately smacks him right across the side of his head. And it's coming. Couldn't agree more with you. You know, special counsel Jack Smith could have filed hundreds of counts oh, yeah. in this indictment. And, and, and this is where... Special counsel Jack Smith is much smarter than me. And this is where I will admit error because I thought, you know what? He could charge Trump with money laundering and wire fraud and hundreds of counts. The issue, if he did that now, and by the way, he can still do that later. But if he did that now, then things would be delayed and delayed, especially if you charge complicated financial crimes. Oh, then that becomes one of these white collar forensic economists type stuff, you know, and then that takes years and years and years. So special counsel Jack Smith actually had to probably remove hundreds of charges that he knows Trump committed with the goal of getting this tried in 2024. And that is how precisely he sculpted this. And it must have been frustrating to him, right? Because he knows about all these other crimes. Now, but ben, it doesn't on that, mean he can't, uh, sorry, he doesn't mean he can't charge those crimes. The statute of limitations still yeah. exists, of course. Yeah. And you know who? And to and to just to contrast it, Ben, because you you showed that clip of what's going on at Fulton County in Atlanta, um, as we also anticipate Fawny Willis and hers. That stands in contrast to what Fawny Willis has to do. Fawny Willis has to bring everything right now. Giuliani, Trump. The fake electors that aren't cooperating, like uh, the head of the GOP there, you know, Jenna Ellis, Sidney Powell, even Mark Meadows, perhaps. She has to bring it now all in one big omnibus place and hope and then and then indict away. She's got one grand jury opportunity. Yes, she can go back, but she doesn't really have the same luxury that Jack Smith does the way the federal grand juries work versus what Georgia has. She had her two years of investigation. She had her seven months of a special purpose grand jury and their report yeah. and recommendation, which we're going to see relatively soon based on some rulings by Judge McBurney. So when people say, oh, wow, look how surgical uh, Jack Smith was right, but she has to be, she has to load 50 pounds of potatoes into a 10 pound sack. You That's know, what her indictment is going to You know, like. what's really amazing here is uh, as you were reading out the uh, release charging that he's not permitted to meet or to speak with somebody who can be either a potential witness in this case or so, whether it's on his um, behalf or, uh, you know, against him. Half the plane that's going to go back with him to New Jersey, <laughs> in my estimation, are those such people like Boris Epstein, who we now believe to be uh, co-conspirator number six. So let's just think about who we do know for fact, and I don't know whether or not it has been determined that Boris Epstein is number six. I know I've read it in a few places, but I don't know if it's confirmed. Like Rudy Giuliani, right? Uh, Clark, Eastman, Sydney, the release the Kraken Powell. Then you have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a cheese, a cheese toes over there, uh, whatever the fuck his name is, right? Um, these are all lawyers and these are all people. How is he not going to be speaking with Kaludi? Right. During this time period, because, you know, they still reach out to him. They still speak to him, um, especially, you know, you got guys again like Epstein who's sitting at the table with him when he came in for the Manhattan but, DA's case. Hey, Why he's sitting there? I have no idea. He's never practiced criminal law. I always a, wanted to I always wanted to ask you, Michael, did you know Boris? Yes, of course. So you I know. met yeah. Boris early, early on in 2015, uh, very shortly after the announcement of the campaign. And yeah. Boris was very interested in being a part of it. Unfortunately, nobody really 
cared for him. Uh, and so I've always referred to him and I've done so even on uh, network television. He was like a dog, like a, a lap dog that Here, everywhere boy. you went, there was Boris <laughs> by your ankles and all he wanted, he come to me, he goes, you know, can you get me into, can you get me into the boss's office? Can you, can you take me in with you? And so on, you know, let him know that I'm doing this. And, you know, if I would do it, he, and Donald would say to him, you know, good job, good job. And then he would ask him some questions about, you know, where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. And Boris would light up like a fucking candle. And he'd be so excited that Donald, you know, shined, you know, some light on him, gave him one moment of attention. Yeah. Now he must be like a pig in shit thinking, oh my God, here I am. I'm Donald's go-to guy. Meanwhile, look what happens to all of Donald's go-to go guys. Go we end up <laughs> going to prison. Right. <laughs> that's the I mean, go-to that's the go-to part you go straight yeah. you go straight to prison ben let me i thought it was worthwhile um i don't know if we can get a picture of it up on the palm card that they handed out walking up to the uh there it is this this is really disgusting plus it's very sad and, and pathetic it's not sad because you know but it just shows you they're out of gas intellectually um, this is what they this is what the Trump campaign or the Trump people gave to reporters as he was heading in for arraignment today on the left. You know, this ridiculous picture of Hunter Biden at his at his lowest point at the nadir of his life. And then and then our president and then comparing key points on a calendar. So at least they know how to operate a calendar, April, June, July and then whatever. And what they're trying to say is every time there was an event a, 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 a related to the House, which we know is just a puppet being manipulated with Donald Trump's hand. It's like it's like a, a perverse Muppet where they just stuck their hand directly up everybody in the house, MAGA house's uh, backside to, to manipulate them. But every time there's a house event, they said, oh, and that's when there was an indictment from one of these activists. I love activists. You mean democratically elected? That's what these prosecutors are, every one of them. So in April of 2023, they say, and I'm not even sure these dates really line up this way. The house hears testimony about Joe Biden's mishandling of classified documents. You mean the boxes left over from when he was vice president that ended up in a locked closet in his garage? And they're like, aha, that's when Donald Trump was indicted by Alvin Bragg. And then in June, the FBI releases documents alleging a $10 million bribe from Burisma. Again, a lie. There's no evidence to support this. It's just a, it's just but it's easy to type on a on a PowerPoint presentation, which is all this is. Same month, activist prosecutor Jack Smith indicts Donald Trump in Florida, July of 2023. Hunter Biden rejects the plea deal after blanket immunity offer revealed. OK, so he rejected the plea deal. And then activist prosecutor Jack Smith adds more charges in the superseding indictment. And then July 31 to August 1. House hears testimony that Joe Biden lied about his business calls with Hunter. By the way, even the guy that they trotted out, the longtime business associate of Hunter, said that Joe Biden never talked shop, never talked business on any meeting or call he was even on. So even and, worst and, case and scenario. Popak, <laughs> and Popak, here's the difference, though, between what we do here on Political Beatdown and on the Midas Touch Network versus what legacy media and what MAGA Republican Fox they do. Like you can make a statement, but you got to back it up with evidence. And if you show me evidence, if you show me audio recordings and, and, and data, when the witness shows up and he goes, yes, I heard Biden when he was the vice president taking bribes. But a I'm wire transfer. Gonna, I'm not going to be, yeah, well, I, yeah, I Biden, you know, or fake news. I'm going to be freaking pissed. You and I'm going to want see, Biden to be held accountable. Sure, but, Here, ben, but Ben, look to see exactly what, what has happened in the past. You know, it's the beautiful thing about history. Unfortunately, it tends to repeat itself, especially yeah. if you're part of this MAGA cult. What happens is they go ahead, they lie, whether it's Jimbo Jordan or Marjorie Toilet or Lauren Hobart or any of these other, Ted, you know, I'm off to Cancun cruise. They make a statement. They lie. We ask for documentation finally, right? Show us the proof that you're talking about, like the whistleblowers yeah. and others that mysteriously disappear or documents that they claim that they have that are non, they, they're just non-existent. Well, now all of a sudden they have to go, well, you know, we have it. We have it. We're just not releasing it. Wow. How does something like that happen? You're not releasing it. 
That's not what we do here. It's not like, for example, what I've ever done when I used to do trials. It's not what I did when I stepped up and I spoke um, on television live, right, before the House uh, Oversight Committee or in any of the SCIF hearings, the additional six other congressional hearings. Every single thing that I said, every answer that I gave was backed up by documentary evidence. I don't care whether you want to call me a liar. I don't care whether you believe me or not. Look for yourself. Here is a document that specifically states that the information that I am providing is accurate and correct. You cannot argue with documentary evidence. You cannot argue with, um, you know, uh, yep. with other testimony, corroborating testimony. That's the problem. These maggots refuse to provide any documentary evidence. All they have is their is their mouths, and what they do is they get one to lie, and then the other perpetuates and regurgitates the lie, and it goes on and on and on without any evidence to back it up. And let that me show you be, the evidence based be sanctionable. And let me show you the I, I agree, because if we lied like that in a court of law, we would be sanctioned and lose our license. Yet Jim Jordan, who's not a licensed lawyer, does this every day so that they can make pamphlets like that. Let me just give you some breaking news as I'm apparently now driving in a car, <laughs> virtual reality, <laughs> virtual reality style steering right now. Um, what we've learned, what we've learned is that Trump lawyer John Lauro says that they are going to ask for the exclusion of the Speedy Trial Act in the Trump election case where Trump was just arranged, arraigned, and the judge ordered that briefing take place in five days with the DOJ response within five days after that. So as I'm on the highway right now, there already the judge is expediting the briefing there. All right, Salty. That's, that's Chutkin. That, that's Chutkin. I believe so. I believe okay. so. Let's pull up the pamphlet right now, Salty, though, because I just want to show you an evidence-based approach. So this is what they are handing out right there. So let's just take one of them, the July 31st day. This says, House hears testimony that Joe Biden lied about his business calls with Hunter. Okay, well, let's let me test that. Let me actually look at the deposition, okay? So this is the question that was asked to Hunter Biden's former business uh, associate, who, by the way, the former business associate is a convicted felon having nothing to do with Hunter, a totally different deal that Hunter was not involved in at all. The question is, so based on your knowledge and experience, your relationship with Hunter Biden, your time on Burisma's board, and the entirety of your knowledge and experience, do you have any basis to disagree with the conclusion that, quote, Vice President Biden did not alter U.S. foreign policy to benefit his son, Hunter Biden. Answer, I have no basis to know if he altered. I have no basis to know if he altered any policy to benefit his son. So you have no knowledge? I have no knowledge. Sorry. So if you're pointing to this as your, as your whistleblower evidence of, of a home run, like, what are you talking about? Here's the other po portion of the deposition testimony. Um, and by the way, great cross-examination here by Congress member Dan Golden. Question, do you have any basis to disagree with the conclusion that Hunter Biden's role did not influence U.S. foreign policy? Yeah, I, I have no basis. Do you have any basis to disagree with the conclusion that Vice President Biden carried out U.S. foreign policy in the interest of the United States? I have no basis to judge or to disagree with that or to disagree. You have no knowledge, nothing based on your knowledge that would contradict this conclusion. No. And they act like that's a home run evidence. All right, Salty, pull up the pamphlet again right now. Let's try to talk about, okay, what, what, what's another one? Um, FBI releases documents alleging 10 million bribe from Burisma or what? The IRS whistleblowers, right? The IRS whistleblower. Let's do the other one. Hunter Biden rejects a plea deal, right? These IRS whistleblowers are paraded in and they're saying, Oh, the DOJ was weaponized and we were complaining and we wanted them to go after Hunter Biden. That was during the Trump administration. The prosecutor's a Trump appointee, is a Republican. And what you're complaining about took place in April of 2020. Biden wasn't the president then. 
facts matter. You can't just make up things. So let me show you these other. So you just saw the deposition testimony. These were the other fake whistleblowers that were just paraded into um, one of these committee hearings. And watch what happens when Democratic Congress member Raja Krishnamurthy of Harvard Law, here is what he did during his cross-examination of these fake whistleblowers. Play the clip. You were concerned about the complexities of the election cycle and potential delays that arose in connection with the election cycle. You said at page 23, and I remember there were always times where we were always on an impending election cycle. It was always the elections being brought up in early 2020. It was the presidential primaries. Now, sir, Joe Biden was not the president at that time either, was he? I mean, the answer to your question is no, he was not, but I don't see where you referenced it in my, you know, for Page me to follow 23, along. you're talking about how the election cycle is delaying decisions by the prosecution, and it turns out that the delay oh. in the election cycle was happening at a time when Joe Biden was not the president. I'm sorry, sir, that's in Special Agent Ziegler's transcript. That's why I couldn't find it. So, so Mr. Ziegler, and you shared concerns about delays related to the election cycle. But at that time, Joe Biden was not the president. I believe at that time he was the nominee for president. Not but, well, he was not the president, was he? I, it, I, it's just a simple question, sir. Can you rephrase the what, the, what time period? Joe Biden was not the president in the presidential primaries in 2020. Correct. That is correct. Sir, finally, Mr. Shapley. You said that warrants were ready as soon as April 2020 to begin searching for records, but actions weren't taken with regard to those warrants. Again, Joe Biden was not the president in April 2020, was he? So I'm confused by your line of questioning. We're talking about an election to which uh, now President Biden was a part of. So he didn't have to be the president to have election meddling. No, but the question is this. Was he the president at that time, in April 2020? The, 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 it's been asked and answered. The, and what's the answer, sir? The elect, the elect. The answer is, is you, yes or no? Is no. That, Thank you. And, Thank uh, you. I wield back. Mr. Yeah, the I mean, answer. Could you, imagine, could you imagine, I mean, you got Porky Pig said, and that's all, folks? No. The answer is no. Joe Biden was not the president. Could you imagine this is how they have to double and triple talk and keep flubbering back and forth with the simplest of questions? A five-year-old, a five-year-old would have known that at that period of time, Joe Biden was not the president of the United States. And these are the guys that they're calling in to be the witnesses. These are the guys that are going to blow the whole case wide open and show this Hunter Biden, Joe Biden relationship with foreign entities and taking of money. I mean, shame on, just shame on them. Disgraceful. And could you imagine that they work at the IRS on top of everything? It is shameful. You know, we're learning a lot about some of the uh, personalities who are involved in this case. We've talked about John Lauro, Donald Trump's new lawyer, Todd Blanche, one of Trump's lawyers. On the DOJ side, uh, you heard Michael Popak mention the name Tom Windham. We could pull up a photo of Tom right here, 44 years old. He's been leading a lot of uh, special counsel Jack Smith's investigation, known as a quiet guy, humble, doesn't really speak to the press just kind of a worksmanlike prosecutor. And you see the team that special counsel Jack Smith has developed. So Tom Wyndham was in that case, or is in this case during the arraignment today. Down in the Southern District of Florida, you have Jay Bratt, the top counterintelligence official at the DOJ. I think we've got a photo of Jay Bratt. Jay Bratt actually himself was the person who showed up to Mar-a-Lago back on June 3rd, 2022. And it was he and his team, when they met with Trump, they identified this surveillance footage that was in the area and immediately made the request. It was brilliant move by them when they caught that surveillance camera immediately asked for the footage. And then that demonstrated that all of the lies that they were being told, talk about the federal judge, the arraignment was before a magistrate judge, but the federal judge is a judge, Tanya, 
Chutkin, there's Judge Chutkin, an Obama appointee, a law and order, no nonsense judge. She made one of the big rulings in the January 6th committee case back in 2021, ordering that Trump's executive privilege claim did not apply and turning over all those documents from the National Archives to the January 6th committee. And in her ruling back in 2021, she said, presidents are not kings and Donald Trump is not a president or is not the president. She put that in her order back in 2021. This is the judge who has been assigned to this case. And of course, what is Donald Trump doing like clockwork, uh, attacking Judge Chutkin right before he walked into the courthouse? He says, Biden and his family still steal mil millions and millions of dollars including bribes from foreign countries. And I'm headed to D.C. to be arrested for protesting a crooked election, unfair venue, unfair judge. We are a nation in decline, uh, MAGA. But you know what's one of the really smart things about special counsel Jack Smith, though, is that he knew that Donald Trump and MAGA Republicans were going to make this free speech argument. He knew that they were going to say, oh, this, you know, all, all this issue here is that Donald Trump just was, he was saying things, you know, you can't chill his free speech. So special counsel Jack Smith just confronted the issue head on in the indictment, right? And he goes in paragraph three of the indictment, Jack Smith says, look, Donald Trump had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election and even to claim falsely that there had been outcome determinative fraud during the election and that he had won. He was also entitled to formally challenge the results of the election through lawful and appropriate means, such as by seeking recounts or audits of the popular vote in states or filing lawsuits challenging ballots and procedures. Indeed, in many cases, the defendant did pursue these methods of contesting the election results. His efforts to change the outcome in any state through recounts, audits, or legal challenges were uniformly unsuccessful. Shortly after Election Day, the defendant also pursued unlawful means of discounting legitimate votes and subverting the election results. In so doing, the defendant perpetrated three criminal conspiracies, and it goes into a conspiracy against the American people, conspiracy to obstruct the counting of the electoral votes, and a conspiracy against the right of Americans to vote. And so Special Counsel Jack Smith is even saying there, look, Donald Trump even has the right to lie. Donald Trump can lie. Donald Trump doesn't even have to tell the truth. You know, he is the First Amendment to do that, just like we have the First Amendment to criticize him for his conduct. But when you take those lies and then you subvert Americans' right to vote and try to change votes for Trump from Biden, when you try to stop the counting of the electoral vote, now your conduct is criminal. Cohen. So, you know, Ben, last night I was on CNN uh, with Allison Camrata, and she asked me a question which was responsive to Bill Barr's appearance with Caitlin Collins about an hour or so earlier. And I have a real issue. And the reason, of course, that I bring this up is because so far we haven't done the two-finger salute. And the two-finger salute goes to, once again, the bloviated asshole himself, Bill Barr. Okay? You get the fuck you today, Bill Barr. And I'm going to tell you why. Because this piece of shit is now sitting there going from, you know, news center to news center. And he's talking about Trump. Now, there he is right there. We have the sound. Uh, we yeah, have well, the sound as well. Yeah, gonna... let's, well let's hear This is a very sad day for America. And it was also very sad driving through Washington, D.C. and seeing the filth and the decay and all of the broken buildings and walls and the graffiti. This is not the place that I left. It's a very sad thing to see it. Uh, when you look at what's happening, this is a persecution of a political opponent. This was never supposed to happen in America. This is the persecution of the person that's leading by very, very substantial numbers in the Republican primary and leading Biden by a lot. 
So if you can't beat him, you persecute him or you prosecute him. We can't let this happen in America. Thank you very you much. Want these, like, you want these trials? Cohen, I want to get your immediate response to that because I never want a statement like that just to be left unchecked. I mean, so. how many times have we heard the same line of horse shit? He's winning. He's leading. He's the winner. Biden is the loser. He won 2020, right? Uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden now DC is filth and walls. What wall is he talking about? You're talking about the wall that he didn't build? I mean, now there's graffiti everywhere. He didn't leave DC this way. What the fuck is he talking about? But I want to go back. Look, you can't even listen to this stupidity. It's the same talking points because he can't think. He can't think of what else to say. So you go back to the same old playbook, right? You know, denigrate the Bidens, denigrate Joe Biden, uh, you know, prop yourself up. I'm the leading candidate, which he is, all right? You're also charged with 78 counts so far and growing. You're the one whose ass just came out of a courtroom where you had to plead not guilty. And you know what's coming down the road. All right. You know that you're going to be charged with, you know, with guilt by, you know, by a jury of your peers. But then again, because he because he can't control the only place that he would want. Right. For the jury to come from would be from Moralardo because these people are such sycophantic fools. So he thinks, you know, that West Virginia, it's a very, you know, red area so that maybe he'll be able to get at least one or two people on the jury that will end up, you know, voting against say, you know, the charges, which of course would create a hung jury. And of course that's not going to stop them from proceeding, but at least it gives him a lifeline to get to where he wants to get, which is to the election. But I want to go back for a second to this whole thing with Bill Barr. So Bill Barr is speaking to Caitlin Collins yesterday, and he's talking about, I told Donald that you lost the election. Okay, fantastic. Maybe you could have come out and said this when Trump was still president. No, no, no. He now waits. He goes ahead and he waits until a long time thereafter, what, you know, almost three years later for him to come out and to start to say this. What he needs to do is he needs to come clean on everything. When he talks about Donald will weaponize the Department of Justice against his, you know, his critics or his um, adversaries, his enemies list, so to speak, Bill Barr came out and he said, I do believe that. I believe Donald will weaponize that. No, no, you piece of shit. You, on behalf of Donald Trump, in concert with Donald Trump, weaponized the Department of Justice to go against his critics in the past, namely including myself when I was unconstitutionally remanded back to prison. When your DOJ reached out to Jeffrey Berman, the head of the Southern District of New York, would recuse himself for whatever the reason might be in order to discuss my case, right? These are all things that should basically put your ass behind bars. And you do not get to go there and to, you know, and to prop yourself up so that you could be welcomed back into polite society by shitting on Donald Trump now. You come clean. You come clean and you tell the American people what Donald directed you to do and what you did. And then and only then will you be in a position, as far as I'm concerned, right, to be welcomed back into polite society. Other than that, go fucking hide in some hole because you're a piece of shit, no different than that MAGA moron that was speaking to Brian Karen before. You know, you just wear a tie and this idiot wears a MAGA hat. So to you, you watch it. fuck you, Bill. And, you know, to those people, uh, the comments, uh, obviously, you know, there's always been, you know, we have our haters that are still here, why they decide to join us. I'm actually happy that they are, because my hope is that some of them, one of them will open up their ears and open up their eyes and see the reality of what's going on here. The truth of the, the truth of the matter is, is that Trump, Bill Barr and so many of these insiders that were there part of the inner circle during the Trump administration did things that no other president in the history of this country, not only have they not done, they never wanted to do. 
Donald Trump tried to overturn our democracy for the sole purpose of retaining power, something I said February of 2019, almost more than a year before it actually happened, when I said my biggest fear, knowing Donald the way I do, my biggest fear is that if Donald Trump loses the election in 2020, that there will never be a peaceful transfer of power. And since that day, look at all the things that he has done in order to prevent the peaceful transfer of power, which is the basis of our American democracy. And Bill Barr, you were a part of that, you piece of shit. So for that, you're getting it again. The two-finger fuck you salute. You know, whenever MAGA Republicans try to use their talking points, you know, one of the things I like to basically say, and we've said this before, when we go through the deposition testimony, we live in an evidence-based system. So when Special Counsel Jack Smith brings an indictment, the evidence is laid out. The documents, the audio, the video, it's not just words. He's not just saying, derange this, criminal, that. You know, it's showing the documents. And so, like... I'll show you this clip. Uh, This is from, I think, last night on Hannity, where he asks James Comer and Jim Jordan, both individuals are not lawyers. Um, Jim Jordan went to law school, never passed the bar exam. James Comer, uh, not a lawyer. Um, Jim Jordan covered up sexual abuse when he was a gym coach or wrestling coach. James Comer was accused of sexual abuse by his ex-girlfriend. It's kind of a commonality and a theme here. Two very unqualified, disgusting individuals who lead very important House committees, thanks to Kevin McCarthy. And just watch what they respond to when Hannity says, well, do you believe that Joe Biden is taking, do you believe it? And their response is not, we have evidence. Watch what they say. Play this clip. No, do you believe that this is now officially the Joe uh, Biden bribery allegation? And do you believe that you will be able to prove that? Jim Comer. I sure hope so. And I, I do believe that uh, there's a lot of smoke. And where there's smoke, there's fire. We we just heard testimony right. today that Joe Jim, Biden had lied to the American people. Jim, could you imagine Special Counsel Jack Smith? We'll pull up that press conference in a moment that Jack Smith gave. Could you imagine if Jack Smith said, "Well, folks, I hope so. I I, I certainly hope there's there's a there sure is a lot of smoke here, a lot of smoke. What are you?" That is the antithesis of what our system is. If you've got audio recordings, show it. If you've got documents, show it. If you've got whistleblowers, put them on. Take their testimony. If you've got things, I want to see the data so I can have a constructive, evidence-based conversation. Just think. I hope so. I mean, these are moronic people. I hope so. Horrific. Wait, there's smoke, there's fire. And so, I mean, you know, talk about a cliche that actually has no relevance here. When you're when you have a legal case, could you imagine, right, um, standing before a jury in this specific case, the the documents case? And all of a sudden you say, where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, okay. Now what? How are you proving your case? You need to take out all of the documentary evidence. You need to put it up onto the screen. You need to show it. You need to walk the jury, right? The jurors down the golden you know, path all the way to the wizard, right? And you have to do that each and every brick, you are laying a foundation of evidence that they will then go back and deliberate on in order to come back with a finding of guilt. It's plain and simple. Now, that evidence could be in the form of documents. It could be in you know emails, texts. It could be in recordings. It could be in testimony from others that have firsthand knowledge. All right. And 
what these two idiots are doing with Sean Hannity, who seriously has, is just a fucking disgrace. It's like the same bullshit like with Geraldo yesterday. You know, came on uh, Allison's show on CNN directly after me. Well, my, Michael doesn't have any credibility, so we can't, you know, listen to him. And Bill Barr has credibility. Fuck you, Geraldo. All right, you piece of shit who's bounced around from place to place to place to place. This guy changes his position, conservative, progressive, independent, liberal. He goes from place to place wherever the dollar comes from. I mean, basically he retired. He should stay in retirement and not fuck up whatever career or whatever, you know, people think of him in his and his, you know, past reporting. It is so stupid when he says, "Well, Michael Cohen has no credibility." Really? Why don't you tell me what what it is that would refute my credibility? Oh, about oh, well, you lied to Congress. Yeah. And you know who was involved in that lie? Your buddy or your pretend buddy, Donald, Ivanka, Jared, Ty Cobb, right? Abby Lowell, and a whole bunch of people. Yeah, I am the idiot who admitted it as part of the um, as you know, part of my submission. I'm the idiot who read it, but many people had their hands in the production of it. And to those brigaders that do not know what the lie was that I told um, Congress, the lie was the number of times that I stated that I spoke to Donald Trump about the failed Trump Tower Moscow real estate project. I stated three when the true answer was 10. That's the lie. So if Geraldo thinks that that's going to be enough within which to knock me out as either a witness in the upcoming Bragg case or with the AG, if I get called or if my testimony or if anything that I say, be it on television, in the press or here with you guys, I have a, I have a hard time believing that anything that I say, which everything is provable, again, through evidence, through documentary evidence or others' testimony, is going to be refuted. It's just another stupid Republican talking point, one that I listened to for over four hours during that testimony before the House Oversight Committee, when each and every one of these Republicans wanted to attack me based on credibility, based upon uh, you know my, my, my plea, and so on. Um, the truth is out. I spell it out in great detail in the book Revenge. So anybody that does not know, I ask you, just go to Amazon, buy the book, you know, read it so that you understand. And if, you know, some, there are a couple of comments that I see that come through. Oh, you seem so angry. You seem so angry. I am angry. And I'm going to tell you why I'm angry. I'm not angry about me. I'm not angry about the station that I have put myself, my family through. All right. I'm saddened by that. But my anger is watching, again, Donald Trump get this escort to and from the airport in his 757 flying in like if he's some celebrity when he's nothing more than a common petty thief and a crook and a guy who's trying to destroy our democracy. And then you have idiots like Bill Barr and Geraldo that want to sit there and in a weird way, stand up for them. And then you have even bigger idiots like Jimbo Jordan there and this guy Comer, right, Comer Pyle, who want to sit there and also protect Trump. Listen, you can't protect him. It is way past that because the evidence is so overwhelming. It's just a matter of time before which these cases are now before the court and there is jury that is impaneled, and the prosecutors put on the case, and there will be a verdict of guilt. End of story. So the more that these idiots do, the only thing that they're doing is keeping the oxygen right in Donald's air tank going and helping him to raise more money from these unsuspecting fools. Want to remind everybody to check out MidasTouch.com, our new website here at the Midas Touch Network. That's MidasTouch.com, quickly becoming the number one source of pro democracy news in the world. The Midas Touch Network, the number one channel 
on YouTube for Pro Democracy News. We now have a home on MidasTouch.com as well, where we post documents like the indictment and have some great stories there as well and great coverage that complements all of our coverage here on YouTube and on the audio podcast for the Midas Touch Network. Let's do a quick recap of everything that took place in the past 72 hours. First, of course, special counsel Jack Smith brings this blockbuster indictment four counts against Donald Trump in Washington, D.C. for Donald Trump's criminal conduct relating to the 2020 election on the January 6th insurrection. Here is special counsel Jack Smith's press conference. Play the clip. Good evening. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. The indictment was issued by a grand jury of citizens here in the District of Columbia, and it sets forth the crimes charged in detail. I encourage everyone to read it in full. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. The men and women of law enforcement who defended the U.S. Capitol on January 6th are heroes. They are patriots and they are the very best of us. They did not just defend a building or the people sheltering in it, they put their lives on the line to defend who we are as a country and as a people. They defended the very institutions and principles that define the United States. Since the attack on our capital, the Department of Justice has remained committed to ensuring accountability for those criminally responsible for what happened that day. This case is brought consistent with that commitment, and our investigation of other individuals continues. In this case, my office will seek a speedy trial so that our evidence can be tested in court and judged by a jury of citizens. In the meantime, I must emphasize that the indictment is only an allegation and that the defendant must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. I would like to thank the members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation who are working on this investigation with my office, as well as the many career prosecutors and law enforcement agents from around the country who have worked on previous January 6th investigations. These women and men are public servants of the very highest order, and it is a privilege to work alongside them. Thank you. Why didn't you charge any of the other co-conspirators the election? That was special counsel Jack Smith uh, in connection with the indictment. Then earlier today, Donald Trump was arraigned. He was arrested and fingerprinted. We heard from people inside the courtroom that Donald Trump looked nervous. He looked sweaty. Again, not really making eye contact with special counsel Jack Smith, who was sitting right there for some time. Donald Trump was sitting all alone at the defense table. Uh, the court set an expedited briefing schedule on a trial date. Donald Trump's going to try to delay it. The court wasn't having it and set an expedited briefing schedule. Some of the Capitol police officers who bravely defended the Capitol building on January 6th were in attendance at the arraignment. The arraignment concluded. There were some conditions placed on Donald Trump. Specifically, he couldn't talk to any of the witnesses about the case unless it's through counsel and uh, an eventful historic day here on political beatdown. And again, 
such an honor to share it with all of you brigaders making again our coverage the number one most watched news channel in the entire world so thank you very very much i mean it's such a humbling thing we're so grateful for all of you um, check out michael cohen's book revenge wherever books are sold really telling you about what weaponization <laughs> looks like how donald trump weaponized the u.s department of justice against his critics um, make sure you get that book uh, wherever books are sold and whatever audio books are sold check out the mea culpa podcast also right here on the Midas Touch Network, soon to be exclusively here on the Midas Touch Network. Make sure you subscribe to Mea Culpa Podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not subscribed. Make sure you subscribe to it right now. Make sure you subscribe to Political Beatdown on audio. Super simple to do. Just search Political Beatdown, hit subscribe on audio. You'll hear our podcasts there in addition to the videos. Always check back in on the Midas Touch YouTube channel throughout the day. We usually do about 10 new breaking news videos and two live shows basically every day. We're going to do the Midas Touch show I do with my brothers tonight at 8 Eastern. Eastern uh, five Pacific will break down more about the arraignment as well as some other big news as well, like E. Jean Carroll filing a summary judgment motion uh, against Donald Trump in the additional defamation case um, that is pending, saying she won the first trial. The jury's made the finding. This case should just be about damages. Also, the federal judge in that case, Judge Kaplan, ordered uh, that the deposition of Donald Trump in the E. Jean Carroll case be turned over to the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. We'll also cover on the show later tonight how the Donald Trump SPAC Digital World Acquisition Company just lost its independent auditor who resigned. And we'll also talk about Rudy Giuliani's uh, audio uh, in the sexual harassment case and sexual assault case that was filed against him. Um, the audio files were released and it is discussed. And we'll talk about that again on the Midas Touch podcast tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Remember to go to MidasTouch.com for all of the breaking news that you don't get here on the YouTube channel. Make that your homepage. Make sure you keep going back. You could also support Michael Cohen's legal defense fund in the case where he's seeking Trump's deposition on September 6th. Trump's lawyers just filed that protective mm. order motion saying that um, they will be embarrassed if that uh, deposition is released pu publicly, among other things. So you could check that out in the description. Make sure you subscribe again to our YouTube channel. And finally, 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 I want to thank all of you, Beatdown Brigaders, Midas Mighty, Legal AFers, for making this network the number one in the world above all of the other major media networks it is such an honor to be a part of this community with you none of this is possible without you and for me and cohen and popak and my brothers and all of the correspondents here to be part of this community with you an intelligent compassionate pro-democracy community and to spread just goodwill and love and real support, not this performative MAGA Republic stuff, real support for our constitution. Oh, it is such an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. Most we'll importantly, please make sure that you continue to subscribe to MidasTouch.com. Follow us also on social media, whether it's Instagram, threads, Twitter, wherever, so that you could so that you could be informed when we decide to go to whether it's D.C., California, New York, for the big rally that we keep talking about. We will have a political beatdown rally with the brigaders. We will all get there. We will make sure that they know our voices cannot be ignored, that democracy is the single most important thing right now, and that's the single most important thing that uh, the 2024 election will end up uh, dealing with. So thank you on behalf of Ben, myself, everybody. We do truly appreciate you and um, looking forward to that day. That I promise. That's MidasTouch.com. Thank you. We'll see you soon on the Brothers Podcast. Shout out to the Midas Mighty.